Welcome to the Farm Truck and Asian YouTube channel. Where it is what it isn't. The thing about uh, junky cars, you can take the trash and just... <laughs> Saving the environment. <laughs> Dude, we got the perfect day. Right? We got beautiful weather. Dude, ever since we ran this and broke the world record, We haven't had a chance to get it out, so I've been dreaming about this day for a long time. Uh, no I forgot about this car. <laughs> Did that power steering work? That, are you good over there? I'd like to cut it to you a little more. Yeah. The power steering, yeah, that electric power steering right, worked great. I got you. you got to man it, dude. No, I got it's... <laughs> Just straighten the wheel and then we can go straighten straight back. Straighten the wheel more and more and more. Okay. More and more and more and more we need our Lou of pushing. I'll fake push. Yeah. Here we go. I'll fake push. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a 1973 uh, Cadillac uh, uh, C10. 73 C10. That's right. <laughs> Only 10 years off, Asian. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna push that button. So this is a 1963 Cadillac Eldorado. Uh, well, Coupe DeVille. Okay, we're gonna start over. This is a 1963 Cadillac Coupe DeVille that we purchased from uh, Salvage Yard. Uh, That's right. Daryl's pretty much looked kind of like it looked. You know, the whole idea, the whole concept of this car is we wanted something unique. And, you know, most people will do a Mustang or a Camaro, and uh, we're just not Mustang or Camaro kind of guys. Also, we thought, okay, if we're gonna do the world's longest burnout, we want the car to kind of look like it's burnt out. Mark Brown Power, it's a 427 big block Chevrolet with the BDS blower, AFR heads, stainless works he headers. It's underdriven. It made about 1200 horsepower, which we thought, you know what? That's all we really need to do a burnout. What, 800 to 1000? Yeah, way over here. Well, with Mark Brown Power, it makes 1200. He said, hey, we can change the pulleys and make 3000 if you want. <laughs> <laughs> of course he said. <laughs> Jesus. So, oh, man. Uh, Mark Brown, Advanced Engine Machine, Salina, Kansas. Quick little story about Mark Brown, right? His daddy started the business in 1962. And all he's ever known is building engines ever since he was a kid. So there was this one guy that was winning all these races in a dirt car and uh, they had been building his motors for years. Well, one day this guy kept calling the shop, no one would answer. So he went down there, the front door's locked. Well, he goes around back and walks in and the first thing he sees is Mark as an eight year old kid standing on a milk crate torquing down the cylinder heads on this guy's motor, right? He immediately just passes Mark up and finds Mark's daddy. Of course, I would too. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I ain't gonna have you build my motors no more. And he's like, well, you've been winning ever since you come here. And he's like, yeah, you got kids putting my motor together. And he says, who the hell do you think's been putting your motor together all these times? <laughs> you know? So for the whole time, you know, here's Mark, eight, nine years old, putting these motors together. The guy, he just, it, he knows one thing, and it's Mark Brown horsepower. Every motor that he builds is one of his babies, you know? He puts so much care, so much time uh, and effort into every single one. Uh, and then when we screw him up, we get yelled at. Yeah, I think he's, you know, Mark's really misunderstood because he comes across as this, you know, hard edge, yeah. you know, uh, this is the way you do it, do or die. That's right. And, uh, but he isn't, he's got heart in all of this. He cares about every single customer that walks through that door. Um, he wants to get their motor. He feels terrible. He can't get That's their motor. Right. That's he's right. That's right. piled up because he does such a good job. Mark does too good of a job 
and his personality doesn't match the trade that he's in. You know, that's right. He's, he, he, this is just—he he loves everything he does. He checks up on it like a doctor. Um, he'd get mad at us if he figured out there was still dust on it. That's right. Um, so uh, we just appreciate him and what he's done for us for the past 18 years. You know, whatever he tells us to do, it's the gospel. It's church. You know, if he told us to pick up a handful of dirt and throw it in that blower. We would do it. <laughs> Is that what he said to do? <laughs> All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ross, our transmission, Carl. Pretty much the same story with Carl, you know, uh, at, over at Rossler. He has been an trans automatic transmission innovator. Yeah, the rear end, quick performance. They put that whole thing together, uh, set up the dually rear end for us. Um, I think we put a, a Detroit locker or, or a spool in it. I can't remember. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, we got David from Pre Precision Driveline. Dude, he made the drive shaft in the farm truck years and years ago. And I told him, I said, man, I've got a heavy vehicle and I'm going to be making, you know, a thousand horsepower, which was a lot, you know, way back in, you know, 02, you know, especially to drive around on the street. It was unheard of with a 5,000 pound vehicle. It's still the same drive shaft. Right. Is it? Know? Oh yes. yeah, it is actually. It, it is. is. Yeah, it's that two piece, you know, <laughs> with the carry you bearing. Know? Here we are 20 years later, you know. Two-piece drive shaft with the carrier bearing, and it's still together. You know, Comp helped us out with valve springs and uh, all the valve train. Yep. Uh, Mark picks out all the custom grinds, so we have no idea what the cam profile oh actually yeah, is. All that's top secret stuff. He keeps that stuff to himself. Yeah, the uh, the fuel system is something alien to us. Um, it We'll go back there in a second, but it's all methanol. We had to combine a couple of different things, you know, like this shutoff valve here. Um, we had to combine that with the aeromotive fuel pump uh, that comes up here in this fuel tank right here. So we had to have another fuel tank up front for this pump to sip out of this tank. But then we have another fuel pump that keeps this full. And there's also a big return line and it just keeps circulating the whole time. Uh, we were worried that we were going to run this out of fuel and burn the thing up. These are custom made. These are handy. You know, the, that's right. Uh, it's just essentially crankcase evacs, but they're billet. They're they're made by the same company that uh, manufactures Stroud products. So uh, bear brakes. We got bear brakes in the front, and we got the biggest brakes that we could get. I made the mistake of thinking, hey. I got manual brakes in the farm truck and I can stop it. So we put manual brakes on this and that was my mistake. Oh. We should have figured out how to put power brakes on it because then we wouldn't have had the drama of the two by four and all that stuff. We would have just been able to do it. And that's an upgrade that we need to do. Um, Probably the only upgrade this thing really needs is that brake to be changed out, right? Yeah, we just need power brakes on it and then we'll be able, but we don't have room. Yeah. You know, if you look down in here at the master cylinder, there's no room for that. So we need a completely different style okay. of master cylinder. You know, like we did on the Ghana rail, the, the, it goes under the reservoir is in the floorboard. Right. Right. So hopefully we could find one, uh, that we could get to work and it, it could fit underneath the car. Uh, uh, this thing was pretty roached. As you can tell, the rust is still remaining from the e edges, but uh, Dale at Performance Paint was kind right. enough to, to take it in and we told him not to mess with it and sandblast it too much or it disappeared, but he, he bedlined it for us. He put some finishing touches on the exterior of the paint, which you'll see here in a second, but uh, for the most part, man, we were just trying to clean this thing up. Um, it's, it's not exactly a SEMA show vehicle, but we wanted to, to be, uh, we don't want anybody to get tetanus when they looked at it. That's so. right. <laughs> and you know, it's farm truck and Asian style, you know, uh, you don't have to have a perfect car. You know, we like our stuff to look good on the inside, uh, on the outside, it, it can be rough and ready. Be cool radiator. Uh, I don't even know if we really needed it with, with the methanol. It was keeping right, it relatively yeah. cool, but I mean, that one yeah. of the biggest radiators they make for for these vehicles we had so. a hard time keeping heat in it and in the episode they didn't really show a whole lot of the engine so i'm really glad we're talking about it right displaying it you know yeah it kind of skipped all over that we never know what what hits the editing editing floor yeah that's out of our hands so i see some comments on the internet that are like how come you guys didn't uh, talk about this or do that and it's right. like hey we have no control of that's really right. what they're going to edit together also we gave them so much content yeah you know uh, there was a lot that got cut out and hell it's not really up to us to to figure out exactly what we need in an episode so we just kind of go with what they say 
And there's no way that you're gonna fit four months of work, three months, two months of work into 40 minutes. Yeah, it's, just it's impossible. It's just not. Yeah. Um, so something's gonna have to hit the chopping block, and sometimes it it it, uh, it hits as different than other things. You know, if, if if it was just a funny moment, you can cut that out. But if it was uh, a thanks to be given back, well, sometimes that's hard to hard to return that favor. So having a methanol motor, pretty volatile with methanol, and we wanted to make sure that we were gonna be safe, that Asian and I both would be safe and we put a fire system on this thing, a uh, safe craft fire system. Hell man, there's, there's no telling what could happen. During the day when methanol um, catches on fire, you can't see it. But something looks wrong. I mean, he's running around like, like he's on fire. Oh my God, help me, I don't wanna die. Oh, stop, stop and roll. You're not on fire, Ricky Bobby. Most of the cars that you see that are on fire um, are methanol cars. We were nervous about that and then Racequip was also nervous about it, so they sent us those big suits. They were like a five-layer fire suit. They're great, though. And uh, we appreciated that. I wear so. it to parties. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show off the, the rip job. Dude. Oh. See, see the clearance? Yeah. I love the style, really. Like, you did it on the farm bird, or yeah, the farm bird for the first time, I think. We got the idea to do it to the farm bird. It just gets better every time we do one. This is the only, the second one that we did. But I thought for a long time on how we should do this. And um, I think it's really cool the way that it turned out, you know. And people, you know, shiny car guys, um, they get confused. They come up and they say, what happened? You know? <laughs> And uh, Asian just tells him, well, we were in a hurry, so we just slammed the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it looks awesome. I love it. What better way to showcase, you know, the blower and the engine? It's, it's art. It's it art. Is. It serves no purpose other than it looking, That's uh, right. looking it's cool. It's art. Yeah, it looks really and cool. And really, the out heck, all cars from the body, it's an art. The body does nothing. You yeah. can race a car without the body. You can you can drive a car around without a, it's art. It's it's what you want it to look like while you're driving it around. Plain and simple. That's right. That's it. That's all that matters. So you can like any car you want because you can have a car without a body. Uh, the teeth. Yeah, let's look um, at that. Were custom fabricated. Right. The mad scientist sat over there in his shop and cut all those out and tack welded them all together. That's that's whenever he became an orthodontist. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. People have been asking how they were made. Right. So that's a really it's cool all process. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, we we cut the plates out, the individual plates out with the with the table with, with the plasma table. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, and so then, the shape. Yeah. Well, okay. just one side of the tooth, just one side. Then the opposite side is a mirror of it. It had to be welded ground down so that it's smooth and then and also bent and also bent then this you know obviously this bottom plate and the top plate it's symmetrical um, but there's a bit of a difference between the top and the bottom so i think the top one's a little it's got two more teeth in and then the bottom it's r2 uh also uh form and terry this thing was missing some of the cadillac pieces and we had to search ebay uh, right. for some of this stuff hunter out of stillwater oklahoma uh, uh, i was able to get a lot of parts from hunter uh, I call him the Cadillac Hunter. He's into these style Cadillacs, and uh, he just had a lot of parts available. Right. Yeah, some of it came from him, some of it came from eBay, some of it came from Caddy Daddy online. That's right. Uh, we just, wherever we could. Also, they call these buckets, um, and they're impossible to find <laughs> that aren't rusted all the way through. You can see this right here. It's just rusted through. Also, you know, the road is always crowned. So when it rains, all the water runs over to the right-hand side. Okay. So I noticed that this car and many other old cars, they're a little bit more rusty on the right-hand side than the left-hand side because they're driving in that water all the time. Now you're a conspiracy theorist, okay? <laughs> Don't start making shit up. <laughs> uh, wheels? Racing, wheels. Yeah. Um, we, we decided that we kind of wanted the front is so spectacular. We're going to have this, this jewel of a piece up front. It's going to be so low. Um, I don't know. I just like wheels. And so Farm Truck gave me the, the freedom to pick whatever wheels. I went with more of an old school style. I think it fit. You know, I love that we had to do the wood block thing. It just added 
so much to the the, I, the, the, the story, the day, you hey know, man, like. Uh, I'm a carpenter. <laughs> I love the fact that we got to use a two by four. <laughs> yeah, it did. If everything goes right, that doesn't make much for a story. No, no, it doesn't. You don't tell those stories to no, your kids. They don't. You know? They're like, well, how'd it go? Yeah, perfect. Right. How oh. was today? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's only when something bad happened that day that you're like, you won't believe what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so right here, we have the uh, the Ride Tech airbags that we had to put in the front because the headers were dragging the ground, just driving it down the road. And we're able to pump those things up and get it up off the ground. That was the easiest fix. Rodney at Ride Tech overnighted those to us and we had them the next day. And uh, they went on so easy, man. It was just right in there. And um, Ed hooked up the air compressor in the trunk. We'll show you that here in a minute. Anyway, that fixed the problem like that. We wanted to kind of, uh, you can't really see it, see it, but we wanted to enclose ourselves inside this so that if, if there was a fire, the safety system would work correctly. It wouldn't leak out um, and it would save us from getting burned. So a lot of this was encapsulated so that we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't get burned if, if something was going on up front or out back. You just never know. You can't guess what fire is going to do or a fuel system for that matter. So this whole thing's kind of encapsulated inside of itself to keep us safe. And the roll cage is just kind of for fun. Why not? <laughs> So uh, there was another group of guys um, that this electric power steering went on. It was uh, American Powertrain. Uh, they bailed us also because we couldn't get this thing to steer. Uh, it was too hard to steer. Electric power steering went right in there. It was fairly easy to do. It took about three or four hours to install. We also changed the gearbox. Um, for the steering in the front and that was Texas Off-Road that helped us out with that and uh, they helped us out with a few other projects also. Is that the original steering wheel or do you have another Cadillac steering wheel? Asians in charge of picking the wheels. Oh, wheels and, and steering wheel. Oh, it is round. It is round. Right. Right. <laughs> I like the old original Cadillac steering wheels. I don't mind it. So yeah, it was it was kind of a dual purpose. Farm Need, we had no power steering at first, so we needed the biggest wheel possible right. to, to, to leverage. Get that. Yeah, leverage. And then it just, hey, why not? There's not much Cadillac left. Leave some Cadillac in. Yeah, no, right. I love it. Yeah. All right. ATL fuel cell. Uh, this is the Ride Tech air compressor, air tank for the uh, front airbags. Uh, air motive fuel pump. Excess battery gives us the power. Yeah, ATL, they. They usually always get hidden. You know, fuel cells yeah. don't, they're not a big uh, show car company, you know, so. Um, they're in a lot of our vehicles, these ATLs. Uh, ATL is in every single one of them. Yeah, it's just, it, it's got that, it's got that bladder in it. It keeps the fuel from s spilling out uh, if you go upside down. I mean, it's just safety. That's all that is, is safety, right? I mean. That's uh, right. Hell, you, you know, if you, if you want to get crazy, you could put a five gallon jug back here and run a fuel line to it. But <laughs> this well, is the end all be all. You know, some of these methanol cars, uh, the rear tires, they catch on fire, right? If the exhaust is facing the tires, whenever it gets down to the steel belted radials, it starts to spark. Uh, poof on fire and that was a concern of ours uh, that was before we got the idea to do the zoomies yeah uh, and the zoomies kind of solved that problem we really don't have to worry about fire you guys are hanging out on one of the most commented things oh. is these fins oh well that uh, was kind of an afterthought right like we so they're they're raised 12 inches i always thought it'd be cool to you know get some big wings on it just to exaggerate it uh you know this is kind of a farm truck in asian style uh, I didn't want them to be taller than the roof, but I wanted, and I went off the way that they pitch, right in through here, right? So I laid a straight edge on this, and came straight back, and they were, it was only going to raise them up about halfway. <laughs> so we went ahead and cheated a little bit and brought them on up, and uh, a lot of people think that they're factory. This piece right here, we didn't know what we were going to do and how we were going to cap that. And Ed and I, we went back to the Cadillac salvage yard on the east side of Oklahoma City. Ed was walking by and he's like, hey, that 58 Caddy right there, do you think that that would work? And this, this, is, this uh, is on the tail fin. The exact one is on the hearse. It's going right across, wow. right? And Ed, man, his eye, he saw that and boom. 
here we go. <laughs> and they fit perfect. That's crazy that it just fits. It looks factory, doesn't it? It looks yeah. clean. Right. Balances okay. the car so well, right? With the big blower, the big wings in the back. It's and, not disproportioned anywhere. And for rough and ready, uh, you know, you really don't get the time uh, that you would like to build a car the way you want it for TV. Uh, you know, you cut a lot of corners, uh, you know, for the timeline of the show. That's true. Uh, we heck, we have new weather stripping. Yeah, that's right. Right, right but uh, what, the depreciating returns, get this thing, we need to do the burnout. Right, um, the, the just, deadline's looming. There's yeah. just so that's much right. to do. And, and hey, you know, one thing that I'm kind of really proud of with all the vehicles is everything works you got if it doesn't work it's it's getting out of the car if, if there's power windows but the switches don't work let's go so ed has really gone through each car and and with the time and and parts he had available tried to make everything work from you know the license plate lights the tail lights the brake lights you know everything if it's in there it's functioning um and that's thanks to ed you know system one uh they also sent us a big stack of filters to try to help us along um you know those guys, uh, you know, along with RaceQuip, they just send us a bunch of stuff and then it's at our fingertips, which you really don't know um, what you're gonna need. You think you know what you need until you start building it. Oh no, it's number 12. No, dude, we needed a number 10 fuel filter. Uh, but they just sent us a few uh, and we wanted to give a shout out to them because uh, they bailed us several times at the last minute. And then let's just check the fuel here What the, farm truck fuel stick <laughs> okay Ed was like farm truck loves his fuel sticks <laughs> oh yeah oh look at that oh, oh. That's like okay a, that's gonna go a city block <laughs> <laughs> with this thing yeah <laughs> yeah there's just a lot of little stuff you did like a local local Emily with uh, window tint glass did the window tint we okay just, she uh, did these too yeah and then uh, we did this yeah yeah you know, we cut this and uh, you know some people know that we do we our own stickers yeah try it so in-house we I uh, cut it and you had uh, the privilege of installing it I hated it you can see <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they didn't show it but you can see where I'm goofed it it looks really good I love the flag on the roof and then it being like a, a gloss on the mat a little touch. it looks great off down okay Oh, he's gonna try? Are we gonna do it? Hell yeah! yeah! It's alive! Right. I love this thing! This is where, where we got pulled over. <laughs> no, right no, right no, here. No, no, you pulled the cops over. Yeah, pull up next to him, pull up next to him. Go down there. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> Woo! Look at that! <laughs> Hell yeah! God, yeah! Hey, Farm Token Asian here. Thank you for sticking around and watching our YouTube videos. Since you're a viewer and hopefully a subscriber, drop by our website, okcfarmtruck.com, and use discount code FNAYouTube to get 10% off your next order. It's our way of saying thank you.